uh, we are almost at the halfway point of tantra of 2021 and we have nilima bhat with us today and she has a very important topic leading with shakti anchored in shiva nilima bhat is a visionary in the fields of personal mastery leadership gender equality and well being her extensive and pioneering body of work is encompassed in her two books shakti leadership embracing the feminine and masculine power in business and cancer is me the journey from illness to wholeness together they outline new and cutting edge holistic and integrated approaches to leadership and resilience nilima ji headed corporate communications for an itc hotel philips and espn star sports before co-founding roots and wings a leadership consultancy in 2004 their blue chip clients include hp microsoft whole foods market tata sockchain bank and more nilima ji is currently building the shakti fellowship jointly certified with the university of san diego and win with a mission to create 100000 women change makers by 2030 also she is uh, currently building the truth and reconciliation movement for healing collective trauma and leading harmonious interdependence at the planetary level over to you nilima ji i'm just so uh, happy to be here it's been such an honor to see the list of speakers and the subjects that they are going to cover of shiva and shakti shiva and parvati the two coming together on your left don't look at the words on the right just look at the picture on the left how many of you have been to the chosat yogini temple in bheda ghat in jabalpur this picture is taken by a dear friend of mine preeti de mello and we had gone there on a pilgrimage and uh, this is in the sanctum sanctorum the garbhagriha of the temple and it is an a carving of the wedding procession of shiva and shakti and you can see that is nandi the the bull on which shiva is seated to the right and he has just gently turned his head in such an intimate way and it's uma parvati shakti sitting behind him and they have silver on their eyes and their eyes are locked and they are locked so beautifully so sweetly so so sacredly that it's like the whole universe doesn't exist and um, this was a picture that kind of captured <clears throat> a poem that came to me uh, when i was studying a sufi course uh, on the way of the beloved and i realized the sufi path is so much like the path of shiva and shakti all of us who are worshipers and followers and those who adore shiva and shakti would perhaps identify it's the path of love it's the path of power and it's the power of love coming together right and so here was the poem and i think it's meant for this this picture the poem that came to me spontaneously was can't take my eyes off you beloved it's as if shiva is saying this to shakti can't take my eyes off you says the beloved would you not take your eyes off me too i long for your gaze as you long for mine that breath catching moment where time stands still and all is as if at once transfigured into a paradise made for us don't take your eyes off me beloved as we dance in my eyes you will see in my breath you will be the many dancers and the dance of ecstasy just don't take your eyes off me for i cannot but keep my eyes on you to gaze on your beauty eternally i'm made for us this inexhaustible love story 
So with that, you can stop share, uh, Deepa. Thank you so much. And as we allow those words and that picture to soak in, I want to talk about Shiva and Shakti as the beloved and the lover, the beloved of the beloved, as not necessarily our beings and deities. Of course, those of us who come from a very spiritual bent and who have a love for them as gods and goddesses that we want to worship. But even if you don't have that bent, I want you today to talk about how Shiva and Shakti are archetypes. Archetypes are deep transpersonal forces, universal forces that exist outside of us and also inside of us. They exist outside of us as great forces of nature that make things move and grow and transform and that mediate all the, the stuff of creation and evolution. <clears throat> At the same time, they can also be deities because every force has a being behind it. There is no such thing as just an, a force. According to Sri Aurobindo, every single force has a being, an intelligence, like a personhood, like a godhead that <clears throat> we can actually get into relationship with, that we can learn to know. We can even receive grace from. Okay. Uh, but even if you don't have that bent, to understand that archetypes are intrapsychic somatic forces that they are inside our body, they are inside our mind, and they drive us, whether we know it or not, whether we like it or not. The microcosm, the pindand, is exactly the same as the macrocosm, so the brahman. So if any forces exist in the macrocosm, in the brahman, by definition, they exist inside every unit, every pindand, every microcosm that is each of us. So what would these forces of Shiva and Shakti, these tattvas, these principles, these elements of Shiva and Shakti, what do they represent in our being? And how can we actually work with them for becoming better human beings and for becoming leaders at this time? So today's talk is to understand leadership that can be done in a very pure and true way beyond ego and be done with a lot of skill and resourcefulness to be able to effect the changes that the world really needs at this time. So my talk is today on leadership aspects as well as you'll understand that you can't do leadership without understanding the love between Shiva and Shakti. So we'll also talk about the beloved and love in, in the context of leadership. Um, <clears throat> so I've written this book called Shakti Leadership, Embracing Feminine and Masculine Power in Business. And I wrote this book because I realized I'm part of the conscious capitalism movement. We are trying to create a world that works for all, through business, we want to make business a force for good. And we believe that we can elevate humanity through business. And we cannot really do conscious business until we have conscious leaders leading conscious businesses. Everything begins with leadership. And that leader has to be a conscious leader. So when we wrote this book, my co-author Rat Sisodia and I, um, I was playing with many titles for this book. And one title would have been the yoga of conscious leadership because becoming a conscious leader is a yoga, is a sadhana, is a practice that requires deep commitment. And um, it's essentially talking about five elements, again, Shiva Om Namah Shivaya is the, uh, you know, there are, there are five syllables in Shiva's mantra. 
and the five elements are connected to Shiva. And um, so when I was creating this model, uh, it came to me that we have to call these these elements of the model, the five elements. What else? Of course, if, if it is based on Shakti leadership. The first element of Shakti leadership, if we want to become a Shakti leader, is we need to become present. So that's the master key. And because this book was given out to the world and people may not have understood the metaphor of Shiva, etc., I simply called it presence. But for our Tantrotsa, where we all are familiar with the Shiva Tattva, presence is essentially consciousness, that still center within us, that axis that moves through our spine, through that sushumna nadi that connects heaven and earth, and where there is this utter hollow emptiness. And yet it is that complete potentiality and complete fullness, which is the Shiva Tattva. It is pure stillness and it is pure consciousness. And from that place of presence, we are effectively able to have stepped back from the ego, which otherwise drives us as leaders. So in order to be a conscious leader, we want to first make sure we step back from the ego self, which is caught up in fear and self-promotion or defensiveness. And it's such a human thing. And all leaders are all too human. So the first thing, a conscious leader has to do to become a Shakti leader is to learn to step back from the head, the heart, the gut, where all our fears and um, um, emotions may be stuck and, and step back into their spine. And that still place, that central axis from where they have nothing to defend, nothing to promote, nothing to fear, and they can be completely here now in the present moment, witnessing all that happens. The second element of Shakti leadership, interestingly, of course, what else would be Shakti herself, itself, right? Because this place of presence, as it is the Shiva Tattva, Shiva is never without Shakti. So stillness is full of power and capacity and creativity and agency. And so when you are present, you're able to access a whole different power base. It's as if you're tapping into the source of the universe itself, the power source of the universe itself. And we call this Shakti power that we use in leadership, a simpler way to understand it is, is true power. And true power that is a win-win power, a power that makes sure everyone is included as the, the movement goes forward, whatever is the intention of that leadership moment, right? Whereas typically when we are not present, we are not tapping into our Shakti. We are typically tapping into some sort of a privilege-based power base. And then it's some kind of a win-lose power game, whether we know it or not. And we call this false power because whatever we push so hard and we deplete our limited tanks of energy, we ultimately get exhausted. Not just that, whatever we create from our own ego-based resources ultimately fails. So it's such a waste of all that leadership time and effort. So for a Shakti leader, they have to become present and they have to learn to be still enough with Shiva in that silence, be able to receive the spandan, the desire of life for itself, <clears throat> Shakti's desire for life itself that Shiva witnesses and enjoys, okay? So when a leader taps into that inspired energy, that Shakti of that leader, which is part of the universal Shakti, the cosmic Shakti, that Shakti moves forward and starts creating whatever that leader needs to create in the world. So after presence and power, we have three more elements, which are capacities. We say a Shakti leader, to come into their full power, they need to become a whole person. And for this, we talk about psychological wholeness. And psychological wholeness is um, 
making sure that you have access to your wisdom self, which is your inner parent, and you have access to your foolish child self. You know, so in transaction analysis, this is called the parent adult child ego state. And to be in a, a psychological uh, health, you need to operate from your aware ego. So we call it becoming the wise fool, right? Um, if you are only stuck in your wisdom or effectively your your um, Shiva Tattva, just pure stillness, but you don't have this wonderful Ganesha energy to go with it, which is the child that is playful and joyful. Uh, that parent-child integration doesn't make you, uh, without that, you can't become psychologically whole. That's one axis. The other axis we talk about is becoming tough and love together. And uh, tough is having access, again, to your masculine energy, uh, the ability to fight the good fight. And love is having access to your feminine, loving, caring, nurturing energy, all this regardless of gender, okay? All of us, in order to become psychologically whole, we have to become the wise fool of tough love. And um, this is the Shiva Parivar, isn't it? Shiva is wisdom. Um, Ganesha is very much the, the playful child self, the, the foolish self in a, in a positive way, the curious, wondrous energy that we all need and have. And Kartikeya is the tough, the warrior self, and Uma herself, uh, Parvati Shakti herself, is the loving mother, right? So the Shiva Parivar is a set of archetypes that exists in each of us. And when we are in our center, when we are in our presence, from here, we will know how to access each of these according to every leadership moment. So... Um, all of these are also powers. All of these are aspects of Shakti. Um, and so once we are anchored in our Shiva, anchored in our presence, we know how to play to the wise fool of tough love. Okay, And its highest form, these four represent, if you wish to map it, to the Shiva Parivar. Um, I want to talk about the dance of love and power, which is what essentially it means to be a conscious leader and a Shakti leader. So we often think of men seeking power and, and women seeking love, isn't it? Uh, that seems to be the heroes and the heroines journey, that the masculine journey is all about the search for power and conquering and so on and competitiveness. And the feminine energy is all about love and share and inclusion and wanting that wonderful romance. Isn't it interesting that you want what you don't have, correct? So how about looking at Shakti, if she is searching for love, wouldn't that mean that she already has power? That means the feminine in us is all powerful. True power doesn't come from the masculine. It comes from the feminine. And she yearns for the completion by finding love from the masculine. So equally, if you flip it, it's the masculine that's seeking for power, which means it is love. And therefore it doesn't seem to value what it is, right? It wants what it doesn't have, it wants power. So in its broadest mythical way, in a symbolic way, how about looking at the Shiva Tattva as love? and the Shakti Tattva as power, right? So the divine masculine is that wonderful still point. So when there is a yantra, there's always a bindu point, a still point. And that still point in a way represents that still witness consciousness. And it is not just inert. It is a profound magnet of love. It is that which attracts and magnetizes and holds together the entire spin and turn, the entire creative exuberance of Shakti and keeps it together. So we say Shakti is, uh, Shiva is like the centripetal force that is the, is the magnetic force of love. And Shakti is the creative 
expressive force, right? So it's the centrifugal force that wants to go out in all directions and, and create all possibilities within their union. And the truth is Shiva without Shakti is inert and Shakti without Shiva is chaos. And therefore this entire universe can exist only because there is Shiva at the center and Shakti organizing every single thing that's created. And therefore it holds itself. Therefore it doesn't disintegrate and cause chaos. It's the Shiva that holds it together and it's the Shakti that creates that unique combination of whatever that, that unit is of Shiva and Shakti and the Panchatattva, the five elements that come together. So everything in life is a dance of love and power of Shiva and Shakti. And, and so when we're talking about becoming conscious leaders, and this is not just for big leaders of countries or big companies, each and every one of us is required to step in, up and out into leadership at this time. At a minimum, starting with self-leadership. Self-leadership is to be able to manage all the parts of ourselves and keep them together in a harmonious way to become psychologically whole. Your parent self, your child self, your masculine self, your feminine self, making sure your fourfold self is always held together around a peaceful center, a loving center. And um, this effectively is <clears throat> self-leadership. And it comes from a profound place of love. But for love to effect any change, you're going to need the power of love. It's not a wishy-washy, um, ineffective kind of love. It is a shakti full love. So it is the power of love, which is shakti that contains Shiva in it. Power that contains consciousness and the love of consciousness, <clears throat> the universal love that has the ability to co-hold all that exists in creation. And so this thing of dance of love and power is... Um, is, is something we must understand as conscious leaders, we cannot stand only on one polarity and deny the other. So since everything comes in pairs, where there are devas, there are asuras. And to be able to see this entire creation, every single moment that you come across, I refer back to the poem, I can't take my eyes off you, beloved. The invitation is that each of us has to be able to step back into our presence, into our Shiva Tattva, and with the eyes of Shiva, gaze upon every single situation and every single person as an aspect of Shakti. Regardless of whether she comes to us in a benevolent form or a malevolent form, whether she is Shanta, or Ugra, right? Um, in Sufism, there is this concept of the 99 faces of the beloved. And, you know, the beloved comes in 99 forms and some of them are Jamal, which is beautiful, but some of them are Jalal, which is fierce and angry and repulsive. But for us to be able to completely keep our eyes locked, just like in that picture, Shiva knows that it is Shakti that has become everything for their sport and for their play. And this whole thing is a leela. It's a, it's a game of love and power. It's a dance. We are here to create and transform. And all these forces, even though they may look like good and bad, actually they are not necessarily good and bad. They're simply polarities. They are interdependent pairs. Together, they create the creative tension, just like in a horseshoe magnet, you have a North Pole and a South Pole, because of which a magnetic field gets created, because of which when you put a wire through it, electricity gets generated, right? So even the so-called uh, challengers in our life 
uh, are playing some sort of a role to the helpers, right? So on one hand, you have people who come to help you. And on the other hand, you have, you have people who seem to be completely out to destroy you. And what we have to learn is we are nothing but the playground on which Shiva and Shakti are dancing. And it is the creative tension between them at one level and at another level, it is <clears throat> this churn of the positive and the negative that is going to bring out from us our best essence, that unique child of Shiva and Shakti that we are. And we can be uh, fashioned just like a diamond is fashioned by all the pressure that's put on it and you know, all those knocks that it gets. That is how it shines and comes out in its purity, right? So we have to be able to look at the Jamal and the Jalal faces of God, the, the Ugra <clears throat> and the Shanta, uh, Saumya uh, faces of the divine, of the mother. Okay? So uh, I don't know how many of you watch this wonderful TV series called Devo Ke Dev Mahadev. It has really kept me going through, in, through COVID. And... Um, regardless of the you know technical quality and so on i was very very impressed with the way they have stayed true to the essence of what is shiva and the essence of what is shakti and how shiva and shakti transcend good and evil you know they have the ability you know, shiva always has all kinds of outcasts around him the ganas who nobody else wants to be around he, he never is partial towards the devas versus the asuras. He makes sure that everyone gets justice because he understands that everyone has a role to play in the evolution, in the drama. Just like to have a drama to create that um, creative interest, you need a villain and you need uh, the, the hero and you need the heroine. So for us to be able to understand that this whole game we are in, if we are unconscious, it's called a maya because we get completely overtaken by it. But if we can deal with it consciously, see that neither friend nor foe, all alike are our teachers, that the, the good people are here to help us, pull us up. And the so-called bad are people here to whack us out of our comfort zone so that we raise our game and in the process become a bigger, better version of ourselves, right? So to be able to be a Shiva who looks upon Shakti in such a way saying, I used to be a Sufi um, a practitioner, I still am, and I do the hurdling, you know, and you're made to look at your hand and keep your eyes on your palm and imagine the face of the beloved in the palm. And then you're made to whirl, <clears throat> turn round and round and round. And the only way you will not spin and get dizzy and fall is by not taking your eyes off the palm, which is moving with you. So your eyes are locked on your palm and they are in that stillness. And the world is spinning around you, but you are anchored and centered. Okay, so it's the same thing that is happening with the Shiva Shakti metaphor and this poem, don't take your eyes off me. Shiva is saying, look into my eyes and regardless of the spin and chaos of all that's going on, don't get taken over by that. Don't look there. Stay focused on me. Know that everything is me and I am you, right? That And that between the two of us, there is no other. And actually, we are one, right? So when we can learn to see the, the inner divinity, the Shakti, the Shiva Tattva in every single thing that's going on, then it's as if from the eyes of Shiva, we are looking at the eyes of Shakti inside everything. And then it becomes a dance of love and power. We know when to follow, we know when to lead, we know when to push, we know when to step back. And we do it like a dance instead of a duel, right? So this is what it means to be a Shakti leader, to come from a place of presence and to know that 
um, we are going to have to come into our fullness, into our psychological wholeness. The only way we can grow up to become all that we can be and fulfill our potential um, <clears throat> is to go on a hero's journey. This is the work of Joseph Campbell, right? And uh, the heroine's journey work is from Maureen Murdoch. It's explained in detail in Shakti Leadership. But essentially, the, the map of the hero's journey says that to grow up and to come into your full power, you need to go on a journey. And you're going to have to be pushed out of your adolescence. And, and it's like you're being pushed into the deep end of the pool. And um, you're going to have to face your worst fears. You're going to have to face a tremendous battle like Arjuna did on Kurukshetra, right? And you're going to have to face the good side and the bad side and stand between them and figure out what is my dharma? What is it that I have to do here? And... <clears throat> The one very important thing that you can't avoid when you go on the journey to becoming a Shakti leader is what we call a dissolution. You have to allow for some kind of a death to take place. The death is that of your old self, of your ego self, of some ways in which you were uh, being and showing up in the world and behaving as a leader, as a person. Some sort of a Fana, as they call in the Sufi thing, you have to be willing to dissolve your sense of me, the mini me. <clears throat> and when you can dissolve the sense of mini me and you can tap in and find that deeper Shakti and the Shiva that's within you, you'll be able to face down some terrible situation that you have to face. It is facing your worst fear. It is kind of the shadow part of your life, the one thing you didn't want to do, but you will be able to do it if you can find your inner Shiva and you can find your inner power with that presence and with that power, that, that power of love, power of awareness, um, that wise fool of tough love, you'll be able to move through. And once you move through, you come out on the other side, a bigger person. You have now evolved in some way because you were able to overcome some major challenge. So you evolve. And once you evolve, you're not allowed to stay in that, that zone, at that place. It's called the special world, the magical world, the underworld where you had been sent. You're also given a whack to return back to the old world, the ordinary world, this everyday world that you have to now bring your elixir some sort of an amrit from all the sagar manthan that took place in your psyche between your light and your shadow, all that stuff that happened there, the terrible fight that took place there <clears throat> from the journey, some amrit will rise. And that's the elixir. You have to bring that elixir, which is nothing but your learnings, your insights, your new capacities, your new abilities. You have to bring that back to your everyday world that you once belonged to, or maybe a new world that you have now created around yourself. But this is the ordinary world, the everyday world, which is suffering and which needs all the help it can get. And so life has a way, Shakti and Shiva have a way of sending us off on this evolutionary journey, this heroic journey to grow us up so that we can come into our Shakti, we can come into our power, we can come into our presence, we can become consequential beings, and then we bring back some elixir for the world to share it with the world. So to give you an example, <clears throat> my husband went through colon cancer at the age of 40, and I was 35, and the children were only 8 and 11 years old. And in order for him to heal, we eventually had to give up our corporate lives, our corporate jobs, and Vijay says I had to choose life over lifestyle. And we recreated ourselves anew. We started this whole work, everything we were learning about consciousness and yoga and holistic health and integrated human development, everything we were learning, we brought it to our leadership consultancy called Roots and Wings, and we started teaching it to others. We, we were teaching it in corporates and individuals, public workshops. And then we wrote the book, My Cancer is Me. And this describes a journey from illness to wholeness. So that book 
would be the elixir that we brought back from our heroic journey through the crisis of cancer. So typically we grow from a crisis. And um, similarly, I wrote the book Shakti Leadership, which came out of my crisis of realizing as a woman, as an Indian woman, uh, I'm actually extremely um, uh, suppressed on the inside with my own inner patriarch keeping me down, right? And finding my voice, finding myself, coming out of that, stepping onto the world stage and bringing this message to all women saying, do not play small because of any voice in your head, right? That was my journey and the book Shakti Leadership saying, come into your power because your playing small doesn't serve the world. The world needs feminine energy. The world needs both men and women who have come into their Shakti because that alone is going to solve the crises of our times. The environmental crisis, you know, business crisis, political, you name it, all fronts. The earth is uh, in crisis right now. And we need Shakti leaders who are going to show up and be the change they want to see in the world and then gather change makers like themselves and be able to uh, change the world. So Shakti leadership was the second elixir that came out of uh, my, my heroic journey. Um, there's a very beautiful song which uh, is a poem actually by uh, uh, Amitabh Bachchan's father, Harivan Shai Bachchan, and uh, it's called Jab Nav Hi Jal Me Chhodi. I don't know how many of you have heard this song, but uh, <clears throat> it is sung by uh, our guru, uh, Swami Sadhyojat, and uh, I can't sing, uh, I'm a dancer, but uh, I'll try and say some of those words here. It's a, it's a song for people who are uh, being called to be warriors, to be spiritual warriors at this time, to go out there and do what it takes and to face down their fears. So it is the song of a, a sadhak or a, or a yogi, you know, who says, <laughs> it says, Jab nav hi jal me chhod di, तूफान की ओर मोड़ दी, दे दी चुनौती सिंधु को, तो पार क्या मजधार क्या? To translate into English says, you know, I have already put my boat into the river सिंधु, I've already set it, uh, and I'm जब नाव ही जल में छोड़ी, तूफान की ओर मोड़ दी, I've already moved it towards the storm, not away from it. I'm not going to run away from the challenges of life. I'm going to take my boat and I'm going to go into the storm. And the storm that is raging in the Sindhu, which is the great river of India, you know, the, the river after which our country is actually named, right? So, and he says, if I have chosen to enter the storm of life, then what is it about wanting to get to the other side? Or what is it about finding a boatman? You know, it's like, I'm here to be in the storm and to deal with the storm and take on the storm and drink the poison. You know, basically saying, enter life and take it on. Don't, don't run away from it. And goes on to then say, Jab shankar roop ho gaye, to rakh kya, shringar kya. Now that I have chosen to become Shankar, Shiva, which is that non-dual self, that pure witness, all-embracing loving self who doesn't care about asuras and devas and you know, who, who embraces them all equally, lovingly, with the same equanimity and stillness and presence, she says, if I have chosen to accept Shiva hood, jab shankar roop ho gaye, to rakh kya, shringar kya. So now that I've decided to become Shiva with that equanimity, why would I have likes and dislikes? Why would I have something that I am attracted to and something I'm averse to? For me, everything is now 
equal. It's 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 Shakti. It's the same. So Rak is um, that ash that lies at the end of everything having burned down, and typically when the corpse has been burned down, you know, and that's what Bhasma is is typically what he anoints himself with, right? So uh, to talk about that for him. Death is as beautiful as life is. He doesn't see the difference between the two. So he doesn't care about the ash. Or for him, ash is no different from Shringar. Now, Shringar means um, that kind of beautification we do for ourselves, especially that women do uh, for their most beloved. Um, this thing of making themselves beautiful for the beloved. And so when he says, Jab Shankar Rup ho gaye, to rakh kya shringar kya, you know, Jab Nav hi jal me chhod di, tufan ki or mod di. So we are invited to become like Shiva, to say, we're not here. There was such a beautiful moment in that TV series, Devo Ke Dev, when the Sagar Manthan, the churning of the ocean happens. And... Um, before the Amrit comes out, this huge halahal poison comes out and it's going to poison the world. It's going to poison devas, asuras, everything's going to get destroyed because no, nothing can bear that level of poison. And as it emerges, the camera goes on to Shiva and he just looks at it and he has this no change in his magnificent presence. And with such joy and compassion and goodwill and auspiciousness, he enters the water knowing fully well that it is his job to drink the poison because he alone, which is consciousness alone, non-dual consciousness alone that has transcended good and evil has the ability to love and hold the poison of duality, right? So, it's, it's the same thing. He, he goes towards the poison to drink it. And um, I'm, I'm wearing a, a, a top today, which maybe you can't see, but there is a green Tara on it. And the goddess Tara is one of the Dasha Mahavidyas, which is one of the 10 sovereign uh, Shaktis. And uh, she too is uh, a similar uh, goddess, the capacity to bridge all the worlds and to... Uh, to take in that which is poisonous and then to give out that which is pure medicine and goodwill, you know. So um, whether we like it or not, if we wish to become Shakti leaders, uh, we need to be anchored in Shiva. We need to know how to come to presence. We need to know how to expand ourselves to such a place that we will not be uh, attracted overly to the good and reject overly something that we call bad, but that we can be able to step back from it and leverage the purpose of both. You know, use the so-called bad to challenge us to grow, use the so-called good <clears throat> to help us up to grow. And we are the ones, we are the ones who are going to take on all the polarities and polarizations that we are seeing all around us right now. And to make it very practical and very real in leadership, whether it is the, you know, the, the battle of the sexes and, you know, gender violence, um, whether it is casteism, whether it is uh, religious um, um, conflict, uh, we are dealing with so much right now that is polarized. And what the world really needs right now, and the, the example of Shiva and Shakti and their leadership, their presence, is asking us to find that presence of Shiva within, that stillness within, that knows how to co-hold everything without rejecting anything. And then from there, find that power of love, find that Shakti, that true power that does win-win that can go into the world and mediate all those conflicts out there and make everything one again, make everything return to harmony again. That ultimately is the role of a Shakti leader. And that 
we need today from each one of us. So with that, I'll pause. We have a few minutes for um, Q&A and I'm very happy to hear your uh, feedback, questions, insights. Uh, I have got one question, I'll read it out. The question, women, would the world not be a better place if men also went through this learning? So this learning is not just for women. It is called Shakti leadership, but it, it is for both men and women. So, and, and all genders, right? Right now we are talking about so many sexual orientations and so many genders. So really this model is not about gender. This model is about harmonizing energies within us. And at a minimum, we understand everything comes in two forms, right? There is the yin and the yang, the shiva and the shakti, the purusha, the prakriti. All of us, regardless of gender, carry these forces inside us. And we have the responsibility to activate them and to harmonize them within ourselves and then be able to go out in the world and bring the change the world needs to bring the world to a similar balance of these energies in, in companies, in society, in systems, to be able to diagnose a situation as um, an imbalance of Shiva Shakti, saying, is there too much Shiva, too little Shakti, or maybe neither Shakti, neither Shiva, but just a lot of Asuric energy. So to use these um, principles to do very practical diagnosis of what is going on in your life and in your work. And it's got nothing to do with gender. All of us carry these energies inside us. Yesterday, Mala Kapadia spoke on uh, Ardha Narishwar, right? That Ardha Narishwar is an archetype. It's an archetype of wholeness that each one of us, regardless of gender, is equal parts masculine and feminine in a unique combination. And only when the two come together, do we become as God, do we become divine, do we come into our full power. And because women and girls are underserved, I give a lot of my time for helping bring women and girls up into leadership, uh, wherever they are. Um, but I also do a lot of work uh, with companies, with mixed groups. Um, I speak and teach uh, in all kinds of audiences. And for sure, Shakti leadership is not for women alone. It's a model of leadership for both men and women and all genders. The two who are one are the secret of all power. The two who are one are the might and right in things. So there is no other. There is actually no gender. <laughs> We express as different genders for the sake of diversity, for the sake of procreation and to keep the species going. But psychologically, in terms of who we are, uh, we have all energies. The two are one, there is no other. Any other question? Um, yes, Malaji, I have a question. Um, sorry, Nilima ji, I have a question. Um, should we not start this at a school level itself? By the time we reach adulthood, aren't our patterns so set, especially for the men, you know, <laughs> that it's far more difficult to change? Deepa, we are catching up with uh, two, three, four, five thousand years of patriarchy where the men were given control over society and the women were subordinate to them. And that was a system that was needed for maybe these years and it has worked until it's no longer working, right? So the truth is we need to do everything at the level of education. Every single thing worth knowing at this time needs to be educated uh, in schools and um, starting from parenting itself. In fact, this poem that I read out to you, uh, Can't Take My Eyes Off You Beloved, it was done on um, uh, 
like a Shakti dialogue with a friend of mine, Dr. Yvonne Sum, on intentional parenting. So she runs a whole series on how it's time to become intentional parents and conscious parents. And we need to be teaching these ideas, these themes, uh, from the day our children learn to understand anything, even before they go to school. So yes, we need to teach, 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 and teach uh, on so many dimensions, because the truth is our world is very broken and all the good things that this country knows um, are not being practiced in this country. Um, so, you know, we really need to remember our own wisdom. Yeah, that's uh, very true. And as Pushkar, the person who asked the question earlier was saying, you know, when you say Shakti leadership, we always take it to be something about empowering women, empowering also in quotes. But uh, we never use the words even empowering men to just tap into that feminine aspect. So how do we even address this culturally in a long term? It has to begin one life at a time, one family at a time, one couple at a time. And the good news is it is part of the zeitgeist. You know, after Trump got elected, there, you know, Shakti leadership came out in 2016. Trump got elected shortly after the women's marches began, the Me Too movement began. Um, from the West, we are talking about the fourth wave of feminism as a pushback to the patriarchy. In India, um, we have the rise of, uh, uh, you know, women leaders. We've always had women leaders, but again, unfortunately, because most growth happens through crises, um, we've had a lot of gender-based violence and rapes that have awakened women um, to saying enough and no more. Uh, it, I think really began with Nirbhaya in a very, very significant way in 2012. So. Whether we realize it or not, there is a rising tide of Shakti. And the whole system that we are a part of itself is out of balance. So to, everything seeks balance. And so Shakti is going to rise any way to restore balance. And we are in that moment. And each one of us can become the channel, the instrument, the vessel through which these uh, gender balance dialogues can take place, through which movements like share the load are taking place, right? Whether it is advertising or, or, or the school or academia or science or politics, uh, men and women have to learn how to rise in love together. Uh, recognizing that uh, we, you know, we, we hold the sky up together and the only way we are going to solve the crises of our time is to come together and work together. And it's not a win-lose, um, you know, it's not a zero-sum game that uh, together we can be better individually, right? So no one has to lose for the other to win. So there's a lot of um, vulnerable, open-hearted and fierce, but compassionately, lovingly fierce conversations that need to happen between couples and uh, in homes. And uh, just like there are women who are rising and asking for uh, what is their right and same opportunity and status, the good news is the men are rising too. Um, I'm coming across a lot of good uh, forums um, that are coming mainly out of the US and some from Europe, where they're talking about the enlightened male. They're talking about how men have been hurt by the patriarchy as much as the women. The men have had to cut away their feminine side. And in the process, they have walked around as half humans. And uh, it has been very, very destructive for them as well to not be in touch with their heart and their emotions and their feelings and their capacity for love and care and compassion. It has hurt them. So... The good news is even men are beginning to see that it is not about making um, women wrong or making men wrong, that um, the patriarchy has hurt both men and women and there needs to be a lot of forgiveness on all sides. And everyone needs to do the work of becoming psychologically, spiritually whole. 
and then <clears throat> come forward and give others a hand, like we are doing here. So with that, <clears throat> we have a minute to go. I will end with a prayer invoking the Shiva and Shakti <clears throat> forces, tattvas, principles in our hearts and from there blessing the world with it. Okay. <clears throat> Karpur Gauram, Karunavataram, Sansara Saram, Bhujagendra Haram, Sadava Santam, Ridayar Vinde, Bhavam Bhavani Sahitam Namami, Bhavam Bhavani Sahitam Namami. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Let's invoke Shiva and Shakti to bless us, grace us, guide us. So that we know all our lives, our leadership, our relationships, to be that dance of love and power where we all follow the power of love and give up the love of power. Thank you. Thank you, Nilima ji, for this engaging exchange. Uh, tomorrow we have Ramchandra Rudam uh, with us and he will be speaking about three meditations on, Supreme, on the Supreme Goddess. Thank you and please join us back tomorrow at 6.30.